We're on lesson one of chapter seven, which is mean, median, and mode. First, we're going to find the mean, median, range, and mode for a data set. Then we're going to choose the best measurement to describe that data set. Then we're going to explore the effects of outliers. First, a short discussion of what these all mean. The mean, for example, stands for the average of a set of numbers. The average is the total value divided by the amount of numbers. And we find that by adding the total value and then dividing by the amount of numbers. So for example, we have 3, 4, and 8. If we add up 3 plus 4 plus 8, that gives us 15. 15 divided by 3, because there's three numbers, gives us 5. So that would be our mean. Median stands for the middle, which is the middle number. To solve that, we order the numbers from least to greatest, then we find the center or the middle. So these numbers are already ordered from least to greatest. My method is to cross out the top and the bottom until you get to the middle. So we have 5, 22, 8, 18, 9, 15, and that leaves us 12 in the middle for our median. Mode stands for most often. So in a set of numbers, you're going to try to find the number that repeats itself the most. So in this set of numbers, I have 6, 12, 12, 12, 14, 14, and 18. Well, I see that the 14 repeats twice, which is more than the 18 or the 6, but the 12 repeats three times, so therefore 12 would become our mode. The range means the distance apart between the lowest and the highest number of a data set. So for example, we have this data set of 3, 8, 12, 18, 25. 3 is the lowest number, 25 is the highest number, so what is the distance between them? And we know to solve that, we have to subtract the least number from the greatest. So we do 25 minus 3. The distance between 25 and 3 is 22, which is our range. So now let's find the mean, median, mode, and range for this data set. We have 2, 1, 8, 0, 2, 4, 3, 4. First, let's order this into least to greatest. So we have 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, and 8 for our list of numbers here. To find the mean, remember we have to add the total and divide by the amount of numbers. So for the mean, we would say 0 plus 1, which is 1, plus 2 is 3, 5, 8, 12, 16, 24. So then 24 for our total value divided by the amount of numbers, which is 8, gives us a mean of 3. So our mean is 3. Now if we're going to find the median, the median means middle, right? We're going to find that center number. So we'll cross off from lowest to highest and find the middle. Oop. See, we're left with two numbers in the middle now. And if I would do one more round of crossing out, that means all of the numbers would be crossed out. So I have to stick with these two numbers. So this is a little more tricky than the time when we only had one number in the middle. And this happens about 50% of the time. Well, when this happens, you just add the two middle numbers together and find their average. So 2 plus 3 is 5 divided by the two numbers is 2 and a half. So then the median would be 2 and a half. If we're going to find the mode then, the mode is the one that happens the most often. So here I see that 2 repeats twice and 4 repeats twice. In the case of mode, it's okay to have more than one mode because this is a tie. So then 2 and 4 would be my mode. For finding the range, remember the range is the distance between the greatest and the smallest number. So the greatest number is 8, the smallest number is 0. Finding the distance, I subtract them, 8 minus 0, which is 8. So then our range would be 8. Let's do the same with this data set. So we have 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, and 15. So finding the mean, we add the values and divide by the number of numbers. So we have 6, 11, 18, 27, and 42. 42 divided by 6 numbers would give us a mean of 7. So our mean is 7. If we're going to solve from the median, we'll work our way from the outside again. So 2 and 15, 4 and 9. Oop, now I have two numbers again, so I can add them together and divide by 2. 5 plus 7 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. So then my median is 6. Now for the mode. The mode is the one that happens the most often. Here I see that none of these numbers repeat. So in that case, I'm going to have no mode. 
And if I'm going to look at the range, the range is the distance from the greatest to the smallest. So the smallest is 2, the greatest is 15. So 15 minus 2 is the distance, which is 13. So then the range of 13. So here we have to choose the best measurement to describe a data set. It says the plot line shows the number of hours 15 people exercised in one week. Which measure of central tendency, mean, median, or mode, best describes these data? Justify your answer. Each one of these, mean, median, and mode, works best in specific examples. The mean, for example, works really well when the number values are spread out really evenly. So even values. The median, on the other hand, works really well when there are outliers, meaning that there's data values that are very far apart from the other data values. So we'll say outlier. The mode then works very well if one number is very dominant. One dominant number. So if we're going to look at this data set, we have one zero, four ones, two three twos, two threes, a five, two sevens, and then two fourteens way out here. Um, so in this case, I probably wouldn't use the mean because mean really works if these numbers are very spread out evenly. Look at this big gap between seven and fourteen. And look how much we have over down here instead of up here. So this is not a very even set of numbers. However, the median will work pretty well because I see this big outlier over by the 14. This outlier is really going to throw off our average, whereas most of these people are found in this little cluster here. How about the mode? The mode I'm looking for one dominant number. Well, here I see that the ones have the most, but I wouldn't call the ones dominant. The twos are only one away, and then three and seven and 14 will have half of what the one has. I'm thinking of very dominant to make the, no, the mode the one you want to use. So in this case, the only one I really liked was the median. So that's the one we're going to go with. So if we'll justify our answer, we're going to say a median because there is an outlier at 14. If we want to find the median, we could do the cross-off method. So 0 and 14, 1 and 14, and keep crossing off. And that leaves us with a median of 2. So the last problem, we briefly mentioned what an outlier is. That's a number that doesn't really belong in the group. It's very far apart from the other sets of data. So we're going to explore the effects of that. It says the table shows a number of art pieces created by students in a glass blowing workshop. Identify the outlier in the data set and determine how the outlier affects the mean, median, and mode of the data. Then tell which measure of central tendency best describes the data with and without the outlier. First, if we're going to identify that outlier, it looks pretty clear to me that this 14 doesn't really belong. Everything else is under 5. And all of a sudden you jump up to 14 from Herman here. So let's see what kind of effect that outlier has. Let's first look at the mean. So first let's do the mean without the outlier. Let's just order these numbers from least to greatest. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 14. Without the outlier, we just have these five numbers. So we'd have 3, 6, 10, and 15 divided by 5. Our mean is 3. With the outlier, though, let's see what happens. We would have 15 plus 14, which would be 29. 29 divided by 6 would be about 5. So we're going to say about 5. Look what that outlier does. Everything jumps up by about 2 because of that large number 14. Now let's look at median. Without the outlier, I have 1 and 5, 2 and 4, which leaves me with 3 for a median. With the outlier, I have 1 and 14, 2 and 5, then 3 and 4 in the middle. So 3 plus 4 is 7, divided by 2 is 3 and a half, so 3.5 with the outlier. Now let's try mode. And here in this case, we see that with or without the outlier, there is no mode. So we see in both cases of the mean and the median, the outlier causes those numbers to go up. But the, med but the outlier has less of an effect on the median because these central numbers are where you're going to find the median. Whereas the mean, you're going to average that 14 in there.
So now you can see a little more clearly why we go with medians whenever there's a large outlier, like a 14 or anything above that, because it affects the mean so much more to have that outlier. So in this, so in this case, we are going to say the median, because it is least affected by the outlier. So that is with the outlier. What happens if it's without the outlier? We well, notice without the outlier, the mean was 3, the median was also 3. The mean does a really good job here because the data is nice and evenly spread out. And whenever that happens, the mean can do the job. The median also gave us a number of 3, so that also did a very good job. So we can go with either answer for without the outlier, mean or median.